So Gaming Studio 2.1.3 came out and along with it came this new feature, uh, object variables. However, um, not everyone seems to quite understand the impact it will have on the way we develop games. And so uh, today I wanted to make this quick tutorial uh, showing what they are and how you can use them uh, for level editing and uh, also maybe going to talk about some of the uses it has when doing inheritance. So here we have a simple project with three different kinds of objects, uh, three different balls um, that are all physics enabled, not that it matters too much. Uh, but what we will be looking at today is creating a, an object which can spawn these balls into our world. And so we're going to do that quickly by creating an object called O spawner. And what it will have is an event, create event where we will just define a couple of variables. So we have um, a rate, which will be the rate at which it will create balls. And uh, we can say maybe once, as, uh, once every two seconds, let's say. And uh, then we may want to decide what ball we want to create. So we can say, um, let's say ball equals, and let's start with the bowling ball. Right. And now what we can do is set up the actual code to spawn those balls. Now the easiest way to do this would be to use an alarm event saying alarm zero equals to our rate. And then actually going into our alarm, we can start spawning the objects by doing, um, first of all, resetting our alarm. And then we can spawn the object saying uh, instance create layer as the position of the spawner. Let's just make this window a bit longer so we can see what we're doing at the layer and then our uh, object, which we call ball. Now, uh, just gonna make a small change here. Uh, I'm actually going to change the X and Y values by a slight amount along the, um, I'm just gonna change the X value so that the balls don't stack up perfectly and they can fall over uh, just for aesthetic purposes. So I'm gonna say uh, underscore X equals X plus random range. I'm gonna go minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.2, which should, um, make the balls stack less evenly. And this is our basic spawner object. Let's open up our room and place it in there. And what we should see is uh, quite a basic thing, really, a bunch of bowling balls getting created every two seconds or so. So um, here we have it, two seconds. An incredibly fun game to play, as you can see. Um, yeah. So. What we want now uh, when creating levels is to create different kinds of balls. And the way we would have been doing it before is either creating a new spawner object for each object or uh, using the create event. So you would double click on the object and uh, here you go and do creation code and change a bunch of variables here. However, that's not really ideal because you have to remember the name of the variables and all that. And this is exactly why um, what the new variables are for. So let's actually go in the create event and remove these two variables we have here from the create event and actually define them as an object variable. You will notice if you download the new um, version of Game Maker that there is over here a new variable definitions tab. And if you open it, you see this new window. So here you can actually add um, different variables for your objects. So the first one we had was a type of object we wanted to spawn, which we called ball. And uh, so here on the left, you see the name you can set. In the middle, you have its default value. And on the right, you have its type. Now, we could use a real right now, since technically objects are represented by uh, reels. However, there is this really cool feature which allows us to tell what uh, type it is, even down to the type of resource. So an object is obviously a resource. We're going to select this here. And then here under the options, we can actually restrict which type of resources we want to have available. Now we are spawning objects. And so we're going to say objects over here. We could give it a default value over here. And it's probably a good idea. So as a default value, you see that now that we've selected resource, clicking this button here, gives us this nice object selection menu. And we can say we want to spawn beach balls by default. The next thing we want to change is the rate at which we can spawn things. So we call it rate, whoops, 
Remember, there is also complete names here, which uh, is a questionable choice in my opinion. And here we can also define, so we want it to be a, a real probably, or yeah, real should work. And then here we have um, a number that we can type in. Uh, what's nice is that if you click the options, you can actually define a range. So you could say you want it to be between uh, every frame and maybe every 60 frames. And that way you have a nice way to kind of drag this uh, bar over here and select how many you want it to be. Let's make the default 60 frames again. So now that we have this set up, if we go back into our room and open our instance uh, panel over here, we see that there is uh, this uh, variable code over here, a variable button. And if we click it, we see kind of the same window. Um, and here is where you can change all these variables for each instance. Now, at the moment, all of the options are grayed out and they're left at their default. But if you click on the edit button over here, you can actually edit this information for that instance. So maybe I want it to spawn a bit faster, uh, like, like so. And I want it to spawn, uh, let's say, basketballs and I want to spawn over here. I can now drag in another spawner object and also edit its variables. And here I can select other things. So I can say a beach ball every 60 seconds and then drag in a third one, which I'll place kind of in the middle, which will ball, uh, spawn our bowling balls again. So we can do variables, edit those two, bowling ball, and uh, this one will be really often every, tenth, uh, every 10 frames. So if we run this now, we will see that each of our spawners now will use different variables spawning different things. Now, a lot of you may think that this isn't all that useful because it doesn't actually add anything that you couldn't do with the creation code. But this is actually, um, well, much faster to work with than the creation code. You know what the variables are. You have some intuitive controls, especially for selecting resources or selecting colors. It's also incredibly useful if you're working with a team, as your level editor uh, person may not actually be uh, a coding person. And so having these intuitive controls is much nicer. Now, I also mentioned that it could be useful for uh, working with inheritance and uh, parenting. So let's have a quick look at that right now. I don't have a, a, a real example to show, but uh, maybe here we have um, our spawner object and we wanted to create um, a, a new kind of spawner object below. So we could call it O spawner two, which uh, has as its parent our spawner object. First of all, you'll see that we have this uh, new ghosting event system, which you can see what events are being inherited and you can even open it and edit it in the parent. And if you unlock the, the lock over here, you'll be able to edit it again. But you'll also see that if you click on variable definitions, you can see its parent's events. Once again, uh, they are hidden. And what this allows you to do is kind of change it. So I can say override this variable and I can say this spawner is gonna be very fast. It's gonna be a spawner, which is like, spawning at uh, five, 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 every five frames or so. Now what this means is that you can, you can actually edit uh, the variables of the parent object um, right inside the variable definition. This is really useful if uh, those variables are actually being used in the create event as uh, before you would have to do some strange things with event inherited, maybe changing the variables uh, first and calling event inherited and you know hoping that the parent event wouldn't reset the variables and so on. Now we have a very intuitive way, a very clean way to actually change variables that are used inside the parent event and inside the parent object. So this was really a quick look at uh, this new feature from GameMaker Studio. Uh, there is a lot of different things uh, this can actually be used for and uh, you can probably expect uh, me making more use of it in future tutorials, uh, maybe even making a uh, more full-fledged tutorial uh, speaking about the, uh, the ways you can use and abuse this feature uh, a little more. So uh, if you have enjoyed this tutorial, if you have found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.